Hey everyone, this is Chris, and you're listening to One Cross Radio. And you might be noticing an odd title here, because this is not going to be our standard episode. Um, and to be bluntly honest, uh, it's because I had uh, I had recorded another episode. I in- had intended for one more episode before the one you're about to listen to, um, but... The one I recorded today on a day off from my new job, um, praise be to God, uh, and I'm very thankful for that, um, <laughs> I tried to record the episode uh, to divert some anxious anxious energy, um, and I'll be completely honest, it, uh, <laughs> it unfortunately... It didn't work, uh, so I was very anxious while recording, um, to the point that during the recording, I was actually having uh, what I call a, a mini anxiety attack, where it's like some of the symptoms of a full-on anxiety attack, just in a, a quicker, smaller dosage, if you will. Um, and then afterwards, I had a, uh, a full-on anxiety attack, good times, Um so I I was not satisfied <laughs> with the episode. Um I'm sure it was all right, but it's it's just not something I wanted to release. It was a lot of rambling. It was a lot of not being what I wanted it to be. And the other th- deciding factor in it is uh, in this episode, you'll notice it is a, it's called OCR Shorts Compilation. And that's because it is a compilation of all the OCR Shorts that we have been releasing on YouTube and on Instagram. Um, but a, a wide portion of our audience um, isn't catching them uh, for, for whatever reason. Um, so I decided... After, especially after some encouraging feedback from some friends who were like, hey, yeah, no, that, that'd be cool. Um, just because they're not active on Instagram or whatnot, which I totally understand. Um, I'm also going to here and now apologize. Hey, if you've been, uh, if I've been late to responding to tags or liking articles or anything like that on Facebook, it's because a couple months ago, uh, I don't know why, but Facebook has not been sending me notifications. And to be completely honest, I've thoroughly enjoyed that. So I have not turned them back on. <laughs> uh, so it's just like whenever I jump on Facebook once every, I don't know, couple weeks, I get caught up. So um, I do apologize for that. Um, but I also don't miss Facebook and the stress it brings. Anyways. Um, some of the topics that were going to be in what was I was going to call off the cuff, I discussed at in more length and in much better fashion in the OCR shorts. So that is what's motivating this this decision. Um, also, I'll be very transparent again. Um, this is probably our final episode of 2021. Normally, we go on break for or hiatus, whatever you want to call it, um, around the midway through December. But because of our bi-weekly schedule, it, uh, the next episode would have been scheduled for the 20th. If something drops, it's going to be a, uh, a re-release of an earlier episode, um, just because those are fun to do every once in a while. Um, but I've got... Uh, I've got a new job again. Praise be to God. Um, I'm very, very thankful for it. Um, as with any new job, it comes with you're in that three month probationary period, so there's stresses with that. Learning new, learning new skills, relearning things, and all that jazz. So a lot of my a lot of my side passions, <laughs> such as podcasting, writing, I haven't been able to engage in as much. Just because adjusting to having no job for a long time to not only having a job, but having it be a full-time gig, um, there's a there's an adjustment 
period. <laughs> and with mental health being what it is, it's uh, I'll say it's taking a little bit longer. Um, so this is uh, this is what we're gonna do. We are dropping our the compilation of OCR shorts. I know this is a five minute preamble. Um, if you're listening to Binding Christians. Um, Radio Arcade podcast, then you're used to long preambles, <laughs> uh, which you can check out on where with most podcatchers, but officially on uh, the Radio Arcade podcast through Red Circle, which is not a sponsor of the episode, but an excellent service if you are looking to launch a podcast and you don't have finances to do so. Um, Everything through them is free. Of course, there are premium services, but what is offered through the free package is outstanding. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to to preface that um, with today's episode and wish you all the uh, just thank you all for for supporting and listening to Run One Cross Radio for the past four years. For being as loving and supportive and encouraging just through mess outreaching messages and just being like, hey, I really dug the episode or hey, that that was a cool thought or whenever someone reaches out being like, hey, after hearing the episode, I'm praying for you. All of that means so much to me. So thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I want to shout out our wonderful patrons, uh, Bex and Nathan. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. For supporting us financially, it means just so much to me and it enables me to be able to financially support other people through Patreon. It covers it covers my ability to support others, which thank you so much. Um, one of the OCR shorts that you will hear is where I'm talking about a universal basic income, why I'm a big supporter of it. And during that in-between period where CRB was fully canceled and before I got uh, the first paycheck from the new job, homies, my support of universal basic income has only doubled down. (laughs) So anybody who's been financially supporting, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It has meant the world um, and has alleviated so much stress and it's helped me to be able to bless and support others. So thank you. Uh, also just want to shout out and thank, as always, Wonder Homies, um, Jen and Matt from Cardboard Koinonia, Hector, my boy from from Faith and Fandom. I love your ministry. Praying for you always, dude. Thank you so much for your encouragement. You are just outstanding. Uh, love and uh, so much love and thanks to my 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 brothers uh my brothers in christ um i don't know if you guys are going to hear this but i'm shouting you out anyway steve i'm sorry we haven't been able to organize an episode i miss having you on here frequently bud um steve hal caleb dave sam uh dave cook who's not only my brother in christ but my my brother in in actual blood um, <laughs> uh, thank you for your prayers i'm excited for for your next chapter in life sir and at some point soon we are going to finally have you back on to do our um our star wars episode it is long overdue um uh and also, little tidbit, guys, I'm not going to recommend you do this because of a plethora of health reasons and concerns. But as, as I mentioned, brother by blood, I actually thought back to Hal. Hal, you are also my blood brother because we foolishly, when we both got cuts, became blood brothers. <laughs> Thankfully, there were uh, there were no, no side repercussions to that. Uh, for both of us, which I'm thankful because both of us are immune compromised. <laughs> it's not anything I'd ever recommend, uh, dear listeners, but it is something that we that we did, and that adds just to, I guess, the lore of Hal and I. Um, all right, and of course, shout outs to just other wonderful, truly wonderful podcasts, uh, ministries. And other friends, uh, my fam, Ma, Jude, you you are just 
amazing family. And then, of course, my friends, uh, Mike, Christian. Oh, Christian, you're my boo. And we co-host a new show together, which is just so much fun. And listener, I encourage you to check it out. I wouldn't be encouraging it if I wasn't proud of it. Um, The Radio Arcade Podcast. Darko, you're awesome, buddy. And just uh, Brad Halsey. Everyone. Everyone. Friggin' everyone. Um, But the other podcasts, Dorkness to Light, Bex, Redeem Notaku. I can't wait for you to return from your hiatus. Nathan from Monster Island Film Vault, Henshi Men, and then a new podcast, bruh, you got three going, it's insane, <laughs> but in the most exciting way, Dallas and Celeste from Geek Devotions, Eric from Nerd Chapel, and one group I have never shouted out before, but I'm going to do so now, and then I'm um, past the 10 minute mark, we will get into the episode, and it will be a long one, um, <laughs> shouting out... Listener, check out the group on inst- uh, the account on Instagram, Christians Who Curse Sometimes, and do not be thrown off by their title. They are one of the most uh, outstanding accounts any believer can follow. They are encouraging, they are challenging in the best possible ways. And what they are doing for the kingdom and how they reflect Christ in how they do things is is just so encouraging and needed because so many so many accounts either by deliberate action or not are I'll I'll say are not doing well in, in that aspect. So it's so encouraging to see an online account nail it in the best possible way and they they challenge me to do better. So Just want to shout them out. Um, All right. So the last little disclaimer I'll add with this episode, because it is um, it's a compilation of individual episodes that get towards 15 minutes. You will see that it is on the long end. I've basically recorded an OCR short leading into this compilation. Um, You're going to hear a lot of hello and farewells. There will be that little uh, sound. Um, between each because each is introed and outroed by by the theme music. So just wanted to let you know that was coming. Don't be confused. All that being said, dear listeners, you are wonderful. I thank you so much. Anyone who, if, if you feel you can financially contribute, awesome. Hit up our Patreon uh, to see how. Um, if not, if you can continue to support us as you have been by listening, sharing, encouraging, and praying, all of that is, is just truly, deeply appreciated. Hope you have a fantastic Christmas holiday season with your family. Hope there is no stress praying for y'all, and we will be back with new content in 2022. We did it, Gus. We finally got through 2020 2.0. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Hope you have an amazing Christmas and a outstanding new year. God bless, my friends. Take care and enjoy this compilation of OCR Shorts. Peace. Hey everyone, this is Chris, and you're watching One Cross Video, um, and this is, uh, sorry, you're hearing my AC in the background, and uh, if you're watching, you'll clearly notice, Chris, you're in a, well, not quite yet moving car, because, uh, oh wait, now it can be moving, um, someone is pulling in behind me, um, you might be noticing, Chris, now you're in a moving car, um, and it's because I am, I am driving. Uh, this is something that I have done uh, as patron exclusives and uh, my dear wonderful patrons that will continue uh, but this is something I, I kind of want to try and it gives me something more to put up on the YouTube and the website because um, I'll be honest I'm actually trying to figure out if I should keep the website I might uh, do the costs to uh, 
to keep it going for another year. But especially this past year, I've outside of the uh, post in the podcast episodes, I've barely used the thing. Um, and it's expensive. <laughs> so even though I'll post these on the YouTube, sometimes people prefer to just do these through the website. Um, so I'll figure it out. But this is going to be the first of what I'm going to call one cross shorts or like 2099 OCR shorts or basically whatever, uh, where I'm on my way to the pharmacy. It's going to be like, uh, I don't know, eight to 12 minutes. So I'm just going to do a topic within that a lot of time and force myself to do it. And the nice thing with that is also gives me a chance to kind of test some stuff out because I can be long winded. Uh, but with some of the random thoughts when I'm like, oh, okay, I was done in like four minutes. Uh, <laughs> I don't need to do an episode about this. So this is also kind of scratching that itch. Um, so quickly before I get into my planned topic, I will say I can't quite drop dime yet, uh, but I've got some kind of, not kind of, I got some exciting stuff brewing that I'm looking forward to dropping dime about, and that dime will be dropped very soon. Um, but I'm excited. It's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm excited to share that with you guys. Um, some new ventures and stuff on the horizon. It's, it's kind of exciting. Um, so today's short is going to be about um, the topic of self-care, which... <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. I feel weird that I'm about to say, like, this is uh, an iffy topic to broach, which in and of itself, it shouldn't be. It really shouldn't. Um, but because I've seen a lot of stuff uh, from the online church or online Christian community lately where... I mean, this could lead to a whole broader topic, but because of ill-defined terms, i.e. self-care, um, <laughs> it's looked at as this negative thing in, in some Christian circles, which, which is frankly baffling to me a little bit. Now, when I talk to some people and understand, like, why they're using the, like, what they're referring to and the, diff the issue is it's under this very broad term, this generalized term that could mean good and bad things. I get the hesitancy, um, but in and of itself, self-care isn't a bad thing at all. Um, also, I do apologize. I'm chewing gum because uh, that actually in a weird way helps with anxiety. Uh, so does doing these impromptu videos or car casts at points. Um, but also you're here in the AC because it is a hot one, homies. And I am a, I am a hu friggin' human furnace. So I'm already ridiculously hot. And by that, I mean warm. Uh, I'm not bigging myself up here. Uh, <laughs> I'm no Idris Elba. Uh... <laughs> But it's, uh, it's, I'm a human furnace and then adding external heat, which there is a plenty today. It's almost as if the climate is changing. Um, <laughs> again, all other topic for a different time. Um, but it is, it, it's hot. So I have to have the AC going. I've got it on lower than I enjoy, but because it is, I actually want to record this. I gotta have it lower. Okay, motorcycle guy, pick up the pace. Um, okay, yeah, so back to back to the topic of self-care. I see people within the church and other groups like knocking it, mocking it, because uh, at times people can make it broad and make it almost a bad thing. Um, the idea of putting self ahead of anything else can be a bad one. Um, but I don't think self-care is remotely inherently a bad thing. 
and that's what I want to talk about to my fellow believers. Um, Self-care, I think, is something that's critically important um, because at times, for intentionally or not, um, the church can do bad uh, with it with its people. Um, I've said to numerous people because I've been off and on involved in ministry for the majority of my life, uh, the church will see some strong volunteers, some really good volunteers, and then they'll lean on them hard. And then there's expectation and self-expectation and self uh, forcing to get in on these things when the best thing to do is back away and learning to say no, learning your boundaries, learn, learning how to say no is such a critical thing for everyone. But I'll, I'll say, especially for people in the church, be it pastors, volunteers, or body, you need to know how to say no. Um, and I think what you can do that is proper self-care, self-examination, learning. What are going to be the things that drain you? What are the things that fuel you? Um, what are the things that are going to bring you down? What are the things that are going to legitimately trigger you and upset you? What are the things that are going to be aggressors, be they micro or macro? <laughs> like, there's so many things there. What You're not gonna be able to do the things that God has in store for you to do to the best of your ability if you're completely burnt yourself out, if you don't say, no, if you don't learn what your boundaries, your <laughs> your triggers, your all these things where you can enable yourself to allow yourself to be used to the utmost of your abilities by the grace of God, you need to learn these things. Because uh, if you're going in half cocked or you're doing a thing like ministry, people work, you need to be alert, you need to be ready, you need to be good to go, even if you're not directly working with people. I'd say within ministry, within just being a good brother or sister in Christ, you have to, you have to know where your boundaries are. You have to know like, okay, am I the right person for this fit now? Can I be the, the brother or sister that this person needs? Or should I be deferring to someone else? A lot of these things you get to through self-care, through proper self-care, through self-examination. Because as you learn these things, then you can know what to avoid. Heck, you can apply that to sin. If you know what your struggles are, if you know what triggers, i.e. lust, uh, you know what you can avoid. You know what you can then learn and plan accordingly. Plan accordingly through prayer. Uh, you can do so much with proper self-care. And that's why I'm saying self-care is not a bad thing. Um, when it's that blanket statement of self-care is bad, I will vehemently disagree and and lovingly argue till I'm blue in the face. Um, because when you don't self-care, it does go to bad places. Uh, heck, briefly, very briefly, because I'm at Rexall and I gotta hop out, um, with the topic of, heck, with the topic of sin and the example of lust, um, I think if you don't know your own triggers, if you don't know your the things that you like, which is iffy, but hear me out. Um, if you don't self-examine, when something comes up, then you're going you're you're setting yourself up to fail even more, uh, or you're then taking things to a bad place where you're putting the onus on someone else. Um, I heard a great line from a podcast recently that I, I highly recommend. Uh, it's the rise and fall of Mark Driscoll, uh, not Mark Driscoll, uh, but he's so entwined with the story. Um, but the rise and fall of the Mars Hill Church. And the line was some, it was something along the lines of, like, 
at times we can blame women uh, for not being like wives, not being available enough. So it's their fault we're stumbling, which is crap. Um, or, well, they're dressed a certain way, so it's their fault that I'm stumbling. No, it's not. It's on you, homie. Um, and if you don't learn, like, oh, it, it, if you don't pause to think, like, oh, this kind of dressing may get my mind going, or X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, I don't need to go into particulars, then you're not going to know you're not gonna learn how do you remove yourself from that situation. You're not gonna think, Lord, reveal to me what I what I need to do to get out of there. You gotta learn these things, and you learn these things, I'd really argue, through self-examination, which is, in essence, self-care. Uh, self-care is crucial to the non-believer, and I'll argue the believer as well. Um, it's just, we gotta, when we look at these blanket terms, we gotta narrow down the definition. So, that's my short. I hope that made sense. This might be a full on topic to do on the podcast, like a, a full episode proper, but that was on my heart and I just wanted to share that. I hope it made sense. I hope it's helpful to you. I always pray that these episodes, especially when it's on a serious topic, are, are helpful. Um, and edifying to the Lord and uh, legit helpful uh, for you. So all that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you all for your prayers. Y'all rock. Um, we added a new patron tier to our Patreon, so feel free to go check that out. If you feel you can financially support us and you like what we do, that'd be awesome. Uh, but if you can't, support through prayer or even just words of encouragement would be wonderful. Now I'm, now I'm vamping. I hope you have a wonderful day. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you heard my heart. Um, and uh, yeah, freaking love you guys. Hope you have a wonderful day. Take care and God bless my friends. Peace. Hey everyone, this is Chris and you're watching One Cross Video. Sorry. So today's topic is before I get into it, I'm also trying to figure out what the schedule of the um, the OCR shorts will be. Um, mi weekly appeals to me, but it could also be bi-weekly where it's like, hey, um, a podcast episode drops one week, so then the week off in between, I drop a video. Um, let me know what you guys think. I'm, I'm curious, but I'm, I'm excited to keep these going. Um, and thank you to all our, our YouTube su subscribers. In the past uh, month, we've gotten three new ones, so thank you. Um, and also want to take the moment to shout out my patrons, um, Nate and Bex. Thank you guys so much. You're awesome. If anybody watching wants to check out the Patreon or feels they can financially contribute, you can hit up patreon.com slash one cross radio. Um, so today's topic is is kind of inspired by a conversation I had with a, uh, with a friend of mine, um, who was a former student at one of my play, my former places of work. So it's also kind of based on a, a topic that I've done a full podcast episode about before. Um, I'll put the link down in the description. It's, we're kind of, we're talking around, um, social work or social ministry. And I feel like a number of these things uh, can apply to straight up ministry as well, because there are a number of similarities. You're in ministry and social media. One of my mustache hairs is blonde and it's just really sticking out. Oh, I could have gone with not noticing that. Now I won't be able to stop seeing it. And I'm sure neither will you. Um, definitely going to trim that sucker. Um, <clears throat> also, just really realizing at this angle the brown hair which looks a lot darker because i just uh rinsed off with cold water because it's disgustingly hot um but dark hair uh, brown hair blonde eyebrows red beard what okay so yeah i do think there are uh, quite a number of similarities between social work um and ministry and when you get those hybrids which i'll call social ministry 
where there could be a a church and gospel focus within doing this the social work um and that's why i think it this this might cover a multitude of things and this isn't like oh hey you absolutely have to listen to me because well one you don't you can turn off the video at any point uh please don't though <laughs> but I'd like to think this this might be a good perspective, and I'd also like to think I, I at least know a little bit of what I'm talking about, um, because I've been involved in ministry for a number of, year, number of years, social work and social ministry for about 10 or so years, um, formally, like as a line of work, and informally, that's still continuing. Um, so the couple things is one, uh, I'll, I'll put the link to the, uh, the podcast episode, uh, in the description. That way, if you want to check it out by, all, uh, I encourage you to do it. I've really enjoyed that episode and maybe I'll go back to it, but this video also might scratch that, scratch that itch. Um, first thing is if you're thinking of getting into this line of, uh, of work, I'd, uh, one, I'd encourage it. Um, but two, and I'll say, especially in a way, if you're a Christian, um, and it does apply to everybody. I'd say you got to be ready to work with people that you are going to have disagreements with, that you're not going, they might be not like your coworkers might be living or advocating a lifestyle you disagree with. You got to check your, your issues at the door. Um, if they're going to impact, say your your stance, your your fervent stance on something as heavy as say abortion, um, if that's going to be a hurdle that you you're like I can't work with people who would advocate for that or whatever, don't get in this line of work because uh, as much as it might be like I'm just in my disagreement, I'm not saying you're not. But uh, you're going to be working for people and with agencies that are trying to make at-risk people as welcome and as loving and get them as accessible to resources as possible. Um, and if you're hung up on certain things, whatever they may be, and you can't check that at the door, you shouldn't be doing this. You should not be getting into this line of work. This line of work is not a platform for you to to push your your beliefs in. You are there to help people who are going through the worst, some of the worst times of their lot their lives, who are going through issues with addiction, being involved in human trafficking, or formally out of human trafficking, or people who are active sex workers. And if you have issues with these things, I'm not saying you can't, but you don't take that to work with you. You check that at the door because uh, it's not about you. It's about helping them. Um, and that's something that <laughs> it's been a while since I've been at school, um, but that's something I wish my program had had emphasized more. Um I don't think you need to, like, people will say, like, oh, social work is NDP, and it leans quite left, because uh, a lot of it, current social work was formed out of the NDP. Uh, history of the NDP is, <laughs> it was started by a Baptist minister out of a church. Um, so a lot of these things and reaching these people is uh, biblical. Um, <laughs> but if you're if you're struggling with that stuff, either work it out or you can't get in to the field. It, it might not be the right place for you. And that's okay. You can find other agencies. You can find other places where it's like, okay, this thing that I, for whatever reason, can't get past. I can't check myself. I know it's going to affect me negatively. And then I will be, not intentionally necessarily, but I will be bringing... Uh, bringing it down or taking it out or however it'll impact my work and that's not what these people need um recognize that and 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 go and that like i'm not saying that to be dismissive it's just to be plainly real 
uh, blanketly real. Because even working with some other other students or other staff who had never had some of these experiences, you're just like, look, man, you're you're gonna be in for a bit of an adjustment, a bit of an awakening, and there are gonna be people who are doing things that you think are truly reprehensible or what have you, but you're not here to judge, you're not here to label, you're not here to browbeat, you're here to give access to help uh, and to empower them to, and assist to get, for them to get beyond this period. Um, so if you can't check your personal politics or beliefs at the door or rein them in or not have it be, like, I don't think I can help this person because they're saying these things. Like, you're going to get offended. You're, you're, doesn't matter <laughs> if you're, you're a believer or non-believer, uh, if you're left or right it, or center it. None of this stuff matters. It's a rough spot. <laughs> so you got to make it as unrough as possible. Um, so I, I hope that part's helpful. Um, the other thing is, and this came up in the conversation with a friend, and this I'll say should have, like, to me, this is a given. It should be in every workplace. Um, but I'll say, especially people work, um, so with psychiatrists, hospitals, um, social work institutions, and I'll, I'll definitely argue ministry, um, debrief, 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 absolutely debrief, um, some of the comments I heard at points um, were just like, I'm surprised that I, I'm so thankful that that happened because that's not always the case. I'm like, what? That needs to be. Because <laughs> um, you're gonna, with working with people in, I'd say, any capacity, there is a drain there within ministry and social work and others I listed I'll say especially because you're working with people at a very rough time in their lives that's emotionally draining, emotionally scarring for them. And at times they will be harsh. They will be standoffish. You're also working with other people who are going through their own stuff and then going through what's going on at work. You need to have that safe space to debrief. You need to be able to go in, uh, to have people to talk to, to get stuff off your chest, even if it's about a fellow coworker. Now, in that case, I think there's definitely room for that. Now, people can do it, do things the wrong way if they're having issues with a coworker. If it's just like, hey, so and so is really, really frustrating me today, and I just need to get that off my chest because I've said it, it's out, it's done, I'm gone. I don't have an inherent issue with that. I'm not looking at that as gossip or a slander because um, I have no doubt that people did that with, with me and I'm, I'm fine with that because I know I, I, I know in at work times I was probably annoying to people um, or my, the, my method of doing something wasn't theirs and it was a draining day and so on and on and on I go. Um, so there was no ill will. It's you can constructively do that and get it off your chest. If it's an ongoing issue, then yeah, you take it to that person. And then if they're, especially depending on the severity of the issue, then you, you go to management, but you don't just start yapping off to everyone in an open room <laughs> about how sucky Chris is today. Like, nah, if, if, say it's me, say I'm, I'm really grating on you that day and you need to get it off your chest. I'd be like, absolutely have a, have a say, have someone you can vent with like, well, today's shift sucked. It was really draining. Um, and f like for whatever reason, Chris in particular was really draining. That's, that's not gossip or slander. <laughs> so I think that should be a need. Um, especially for just in general, because, it, and it's also not just to rant about coworkers or Chris, um, but to have a space to just decompress, because you do the best you can to leave work at work and home at home, 
but sometimes there will be that bleed over and it'll be a, you'll have had a terrible sleep or you and your personal life are going through a very stressful time that will impact how you work having that space to just be straight up about uh what you're going through is good because then you're like okay someone else knows so if i'm iffy today it's it's known like my coworker knows um that's not to give excuses but it's it's reasoning <laughs> um and then especially if it's a rough shift with youth with if you're working with adults with adults whatever it may be all i can do is advocate for <laughs> advocate for debriefing um and find somebody within your workplace that you can debrief with. And I'd especially say within your workplace because you want it as much as possible to leave work at work. So it's not just draining uh, you when you go home. Um, so you're leaving it at work. That That's what I'd say. So hope this was a, hope this was a good video. Hope it, there was some good learning. <laughs> <laughs> um let me know let me know what you let me know what you think hope you enjoyed it and also let me know what you think the schedule uh should be because I'm, I'm still figuring this out but i'm excited to do more of these all that being said have a wonderful day take care and god bless my friends also uh seek out power rangers rpm it is one of the best power rangers series peace and you're watching One Cross Video, and we are doing another uh, short for our OCR Shorts series. Uh, but today's is going to dip into, um, I guess, politics a little bit nor more than I, I normally would. Um, but in a way, I felt like I, I not had to, but wanted to. Um, and I guess the reason I felt I, in a way, not had to, but I guess I want to, is because I have had a, a number of conversations over the past couple days, um, online and offline, since uh, on my personal Instagram, um, last week I shared a post about um, the benefits of universal basic income. Um, and that's something I'm a big, big supporter of um, going forward for Canada. Um, and I guess I want to explain it here because, well, I want to. Why not? Um, and also, it might be interesting to, to you guys, um, especially uh, y'all in other countries. Um, so I didn't always think the way I do about universal basic income, uh, but it's something I've really come around to in the past, um, say, two years, um, two and a half years, and then covid truly hammered at home um because once we saw the benefits of the cerp towards people it's like when y'all say let's get back to normal to me it's like i was seeing a lot of things that weren't working before and then got blown out the water is clearly not working <laughs> during covid and we need to learn from that and not go back to it and this is, to me anyway, one of those things. Now, I'm not going to say to anybody, like, you're wrong if you don't think universal basic income is a good thing, or you're a terrible person or bad. No. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll disagree with you. Um, and I, I'm curious how you've, I'll be curious how you've gotten to that conclusion. Um, because some of my own biases and conclusions have been truly challenged and shot down over this um over this time and looking into it so let me i'll just dive in so part of it is um one i've worked with so many non non uh, low income people people who can't get out of the system <laughs> um and the system that's there like people will be like well we already have social benefits and all that they're not enough <laughs> like this isn't to pick on anybody anywhere but someone saying like oh well there's plenty yeah when you live in like a small town near Sudbury where the cost of living is like 700 a month sure 
there, it's enough. But in most places in Ontario, but I'll cite my city, Hamilton, and my former city, Toronto, um, both have like the highest, some of the, some of, if not the highest costs of living in the country. Um, your average apartment, bachelor apartment, is uh, at least a thousand, if not eleven hundred or more a month. Social benefits are like seven hundred dollars if you're on one, and if you're on two, great, you just made rent. You just barely made rent. You didn't get enough for food, so you're going to have to hit up food banks, which people are challenging. Um, and there's a limit to what food they have access to. Um, they can't get uh, bus funds, so they can't get out to the apparent job interviews, which people say, well, there's enough jobs, when factually speaking, there is not. Um, heck, in, in May... Canada lost 68,000 jobs, most of which were in Ontario and Nova Scotia. How many companies, how many businesses that aren't huge conglomerates shut down over the time of COVID? And the job industries are changing. The major So many jobs that were entry level, like the factory jobs, the jobs that you can just get from a high school education, guess what? Most of them are gone or automated now, which great. That's that makes stuff super efficient and all that. But that's also jobs. Our country, Canada, is not good at training people to where the workforce will be. And mo so many jobs are going to be web based online and that kind of thing. And we are we are way behind. Um, and also speaking as somebody who's been job hunting for months now, the jobs available, people can now afford to be so super picky that I've applied to, I don't know, 20 jobs, 24 jobs in the past two weeks, three weeks, and I'm getting no through all of them. And the other ones that I can apply for, um, they're looking for 10 years experience in what I do. Great, I have that. They're looking for, and it's a requirement, not a would be great. It is an absolute requirement for minimum your bachelor's, if not your master's. And the master's one is becoming much more uh, much more frequent. Um, so these are limiting factors. Uh, so many people are in debt because the insane, absurd cost of our college education system. Um, other companies, as they downsized during COVID part-time jobs in a way increased, but it's because full-time jobs were getting eliminated. Um, so it's not like there's any actual new jobs. So we're coming to a point where there's not enough work for the amount, for a grand amount, a, a huge chunk of the population. Um, also, we're hitting the absurd um, reality that there are single parents um, or two parents working two or three jobs amongst the both of them just to make ends meet to provide for their children. This isn't how it should be. <laughs> like, yes, it, it, you can absolutely say it like, oh, some people will abuse this. You are correct. I'm not going to tell you otherwise. But it's not going to be the majority. And that's, that small minority, you don't cancel this for, for everybody else because of that small minority. Um, another thing that I've seen people say, like, hey, we're not sure about, the, um, about it because we feel like it's going gonna, it's gonna to wreck the economy. That's not true. Or at least a lot of economic experts will argue that that is not true. Um, cited by ubiworks.ca, which also talked to, uh, let's see, the Canadian Center for Economic Analysis. So it's not just people supporting their biases. Uh, they are looking at uh, basic income could grow Canada's economy 80 billion a year 
um, which is more than Canada's tourism and hospitality industries, which took a huge hit during COVID. <laughs> um, that's bonkers. So the, the idea of, oh, this will tank the economy, it doesn't hold much merit. Um, also, like, let's look at some demographics and stuff. So here's some metrics and the ideas of the benefits. So the idea would be everybody would get $24,000 a year, just straight up. That being 500 a week, so 2,000 a month. I have no idea how they pay it, if it would all be in one lump sum, or once a week, here's 500. That will get figured out later. However, let's go into it. Um, so the idea would be 3.2 million families would be lifted above the poverty line. That's wonderful. Um, 129,000 lone parent families would be lifted above the poverty line, leaving none remaining below the poverty line. That's awesome. Um, it would increase income on average for 2.3 million families in the lowest income bracket. The, the 1.7 million families in the second lowest income bracket would see a 114% increase and the 3.3 million families in the third lowest bracket would see a 21% increase on average. This benefits everyone. And that's like, that's, that's why I'm a huge fan of it. Um, I don't see a wrong here. Yes, people will abuse it. And yes, there are, there are some unknowns, but the pros greatly outweigh the cons here. Um, and it would help so many people. Now, from some other Christians I've talked to, some of their hesitancy is they, they'll, they'll say, and I don't think it holds much merit. I'm not trying to insult you. It's just, I don't see a correlation. Um, <clears throat> it's almost like, well, this... This makes people dependent on the government and it creates the government as the savior to which I'd say it, I don't think it does. Um, and to a by and large extent in our countries, in our Western countries, we are already dependent on the government for so many things. That's why when things aren't going well, we protest them. Uh, and that could be a whole kettle of fish. And just because someone could view it that way, that doesn't mean it's all bad. And then I'd say we need to talk to that, the few who do that, and be like, look, they, they ain't saving you. Like, they're helping you, but they're, they're not your savior. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to share some of that stuff. To me, I'm, I'm sharing the facts. Again, I'm not trying to sway you um, or guilt you or anything like that. I'm just sharing one, my heart, but then also two, hopefully some stuff that will, as I've talked to people, there's a lot of information about it, but of, because of the day and age we live in, so much of it is just like, well, you're getting it from there and that's biased and all that, or automatic skeptic, skepticism of almost any, <laughs> any news or reporting website. Let alone, uh, like, not even the bad ones, not even the clearly biased ones. <laughs> like, it's it's seeping into everything. So I hope that you you trust me in, in weeding out biases, because I try that as hard as I can. Um, with these numbers, I deliberately looked at multiple sites to get it, and not just, like, one recommending, say, Huff, the Huffington Post. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to share that and why I think why I'm becoming so passionate about it, but also why I think it would be so beneficial for Canada. And I, I'd argue the world or, or any Western country. It would alleviate so many of these huge issues that contribute to so many other issues, micro and macro, that I don't see, that I don't see how it's bad. And also the worry about the economy, I could... Like, even though this shows, like, it would work, 
worrying about the economy over the well-being of other people is something I, I don't care about. If it's <laughs> like, if it's, well, the economy will take a hit. It's like, will it benefit people? Will it help? <laughs> will it help the people of Canada? It is the answer. Yes. Then screw the economy. At least that that's where I've kind of always been. But thankfully, this also <laughs> argues and experts argue and show that it would benefit the economy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I hope you found that interesting. I might do some more political takes um, with the shorts, but I don't always want it to be politics. Um, and with that, like, again, I'm not trying to beat up on you. Just share some information in, in a loving way, but also a, a firm way. Um, and hopefully it'll it'll get you looking into it especially if you're if you're against it like i said i'm not trying to sway you but i'm trying to share with you the why i think it's important why it is and that leads into why I'd just flat out say why it is important um but also why like just look into it yourself and yeah hopefully come september 20th <laughs> this is something that'll happen We'll see. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All that being said, hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for checking these out. Thank you for your love and support. And God bless, my friends. Hey, everyone. This is Chris, and you're watching One Cross Video. And uh, we're back for another episode of our OCR Shorts. Uh, I've got a timer going on because uh, Instagram, D Instagram TV, IGTV, where we post some of these, um, They've got a time limit of 15 minutes. And once you factor in the intro and the outro, it cuts you down by like, I don't know, 40 seconds. Um, anyways, I might end up posting this early just because it's doing, uh, it is speaking to some things that are frustratingly happening uh, concurrently, um, but also something that's happening on Monday. And it's something I, I want to remind people, period. Anytime there's an election, um, peek behind the curtain, the second episode of, um, of my new podcast with Christian, the radio arcade podcast at the end, I do the same thing. I encourage people to pray for their leaders, but that episode drops two days after the election. <laughs> um, so this is kind of, I'm aiming to have this out Sunday or Monday. Um, probably Sunday though, just cause, um, working all day Monday as a poll worker. <laughs> um, anyways, so this is, I'm going to say as much for me as it is something I want to share with y'all. And the reason it's as much for me is like point blank. Um, I've been angry. <laughs> like it's, it's embarrassing as a as a Canadian um, and frustrating uh, if I hear Christians being involved in it um, I'm talking about the the protests of the uh, the vaccine passport and I've said on my personal Instagram a number of times if you feel the need to protest to peacefully protest you absolutely have the right to do that and I might not agree with your stance, but you have that right. And I encourage you to embrace that right. But how the protesting is going on is frankly disgusting um, and upsetting and wrong. And I try not to make sweeping statements. Um, it's something I actually talk to Christian about a lot. Um, and we, we talked about it a fair bit on the next episode. I'm not trying to plug, just just being real. Um, and this is one of those situations <laughs> where it's it's challenging um, not to because I, I don't understand what people are thinking when they do this. There is no, no good coming from this. Um, it's harmful. It's... Like, it's contributing to further deaths. You're reading horror stories from nurses who are describing people not only blocking ambulance access outside the hospital, but coming into the hospital to protest 
and then having loved ones dying and there not being a private place for them to grieve. Like, what the heck? <sighs> and, and this is why I'm doing this, because y'all know me. I try, I, I do try uh, to be as fair and level as possible um, and as loving as possible, even graceful towards things, I, things and ideas I really disagree with. And this one is so challenging for me. Um, so many times today, I've just wanted to rant and, and just rip apart the people doing this. And, and I know that'll feel good. But it's not something I should do. And trust me, there's a huge part of me being like, Chris, you should. <laughs> like, just, just do it, bruh. And I can't. And uh, part of that I'm, I'm very thankful for is, as I was just pausing, because I'll be honest, today I'm incredibly anxious. Um, it hasn't been a good day for that. And as I was pausing and kind of trying to breathe, uh, I was reminded of scripture where this is something I remind other people constantly. <laughs> So I'm like, all right, this might not be the reminder I want right now, but it's accurate and I need to do this as well because um, it's something God tells us to do. So I'll, I'll try to keep this quick um, in two sections. The first one is uh, we're supposed to pray for our enemies. Now, enemy seems like a harsh word. It does. But in this situation, I will... <laughs> I think it applies because it's not, maybe it's not just enemy. Maybe it's people who wrong me or do things that I think are disgusting. <laughs> um, and in the past in, in social work and ministry, you got to get beyond that stuff and work with these people at an individual level. So I'm going to try to put my faith into practice here. And I wanted to remind y'all especially the believers who see this stuff and get just as angry about it and at other things, what the Bible says. So we are supposed to pray for our enemies. Um, give me one sec. I had the scriptures open. Um, dang it. This is what happens when I click. Um, okay, here we go. So Ephesians 4. Verse 32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Matthew 5, 44, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Romans 12, 20, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will burn, you will heap burning coals on his head, which is a, a very funny mental image. But the point of that one is like you're in a way killing them with kindness. Um, and I, I, I love that idea. Um, and those are just some of the examples. Like, yeah, it's. Um, oh, here. Another one from Matthew, again, Matthew 43 to 45. Um, You've heard it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. And then Luke 6, 27 to 28. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, Pray for those who mistreat you. So as much as the crowd of anti-vaxxers, that particular crowd, doing all these horrible things, legitimately angers me, and um, the, there should be consequences for their actions... And they should be protesting Dougie and not hospitals and doing all this harm. I still need to pray for them. 
<laughs> like, I, I can't ignore the abundance of scriptures that, that tells me that. And I'll be honest, like, I, I got to do that several times a day. And it, it does help. And I guess the other kind of hope is I know through, through this video, um, through the video series, through the podcast at points when I've talked politics, and most likely through this new podcast, uh, there'll be times where people may consider me an enemy, not like a blood feud enemy, but you get what I mean. Um, cause we're hyper everything at this point where if you disagree, you're, you're the worst. <laughs> Um, so that part, I want to remind you, I, I know the majority of people and fellow believers who see this stuff, they know it's not right and they're getting angry and justifiably so, but we still need to pray for these people and not in a way that the Namville will fall on their head, but that they'll, they'll do this right and they, they'll realize the harm they are doing. Okay, so the second one, and it's going to be less of a focus, but we have an election coming up in Canada this Monday. Uh, we'll see what happens with it. I've already gone and voted. Um, like I said, I'm. it happened very fast, but I will be working the polls on Monday, so that's going to be interesting. Um, however... I, so I had to go and vote early. And every time it's election going around without fail, um, homies in the States, it's going to feel like I'm picking on you, but I feel this is an apt criticism. Canada is learning from the crap show that is your guys' politics and how it's treated. <laughs> and we're adopting it up here, much to my chagrin and, and horror. Um... <laughs> Everybody needs to do politics better. Um, and of course, it's like, well, if it goes this, like it's, we're doomed. We're, no, we're not. Um, okay, so I just want to share <laughs> some quick scriptures about praying for our leaders. Um, so 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 2. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all of those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. 1 Peter 2.17 Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Um, I know in my last video and my most recent One Cross Radio episode, love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> that also applies to our leaders who are absolutely in a higher stand, like higher standard to be held accountable to. But that doesn't mean we don't still love. Okay. Um, and then also Psalms 210. Therefore, you kings, be wise, be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. So, remember, fellow believers, non-believers or people of a different faith get into the house. Pray for them. Pray for them. It, pray for them. <laughs> uh, let's see. Sorry, I've got so many tabs open. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I had like a, a good list of like 10 or 12. <laughs> okay, here we go. So sorry about that. Um, Romans 13, 1. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. God allowed the person that you didn't want to win. You got to deal with that and pray for them. And again, not that they'll be defeated and embarrassed and an anvil will fall on their head. Pray for them. Pray for them like you'd pray for an enemy. 
Or, better yet, pray for them like you'd pray for a loved one. As much as I might not agree with whoever, our current prime minister, I'll go with him, uh, or any number of the candidates, really, as much as I might not agree with their politics, they're in a tough position. They really are. And me yelling at them isn't going to do it. We got to hold them accountable, absolutely, but also for just screaming at how terrible they are at them. Why would they listen? Why would anybody listen? I mean, let's be real. We don't listen when someone does that to us. Um, so, yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you all today. I hope you heard my heart. I hope this is encouraging, and I hope it's a helpful reminder. Thank you for your love and support. Love you guys. Have a wonderful day, and God bless. This is Chris, and you're watching One Cross Video, uh, and this is an unplanned bonus episode of our OCR Shorts, uh, but I'll be honest, I've got some anxious energy and just some, uh, in a way, some frustrations <laughs> that I'm going to try to talk about this in as constructive a way as possible. Y'all know me, I want to be, I might be firm, but it, it's also in love. Um, and this is, this has been a sore spot for me for, for a while. Um, and it's happening again, and it's just, I've seen a lot of it on Twitter and Instagram, especially on Instagram, and it's, uh, it's just, no, this is, this isn't the thing. Um, on a side note, I am rocking a Die Rangers t-shirt because <laughs> Die Ranger was awesome. Um, it still is. You can find it. Anyways, um, so what this quick video is going to be about is, to an extent, about uh, a certain pastor named uh, Arthur Paulowski if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Um, and then I guess to an extent about uh, persecution of Christians. Because uh, make no mistake, it does exist. But what Mr. Arthur, Arthur Palowski and his brother are going through is not Christian persecution. It's not. It simply is not. Um, now, why do I say that with such confidence and firmness? Because the images that are going around and the stuff that's linked, it's all it's all very misleading. Uh, and it negates certain facts. Uh, the things that got me going were like, a pastor is sentenced to jail for six years for opening his church. And then, of course, it gets into that crowd that's like, this isn't about health. This is about control. What does the government gain from that kind of control? Honestly, what what does it gain? No one has actually been able to answer that question. It's the blanket statement of it's about control, but what do they gain? Like, actively, what do they actually gain? Moving on. Um this isn't about censorship. This isn't about persecuting a, a pastor. This is a man and unfortunately a ministry that has repeatedly broken the law. That is why he's being arrested. That is why he's facing jail time. Not for his Christian beliefs. Uh, like, I have Christian beliefs. I don't hide them. I talk about them in these videos. I talk about them in my podcasts. Heck, I've written for geeky devotionals. Um, churches across Canada are open now. <laughs> like, it's not flying into closed churches. I understand the importance of church and community. I'm not somebody, though, who was always like, oh, no. No, 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 we can't do online. I think that's been shown to be not true. Don't put God in that box. <laughs> he, 
he can he spoke through a donkey we believe that but we don't believe that he can successfully have ministry through pastors and community in an online basis that's the jump anyways sorry a lot of tangents i'm trying uh but yeah I've seen so many people talk about this guy, like, oh, it's 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 not persecution. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> like, we might not like COVID restrictions. We might not enjoy them. And I get it, as a church, we want to be in communion and in community with each other and close with each other and all that goodness. But... These are the laws right now. We respect those laws. As much as we don't agree with them, uh, give me one second. Sorry. I should have had this one ready. Sorry, I'm getting the exact scripture, but this is even talked about in in scripture heck christ said like give to caesar what is caesar's we're not we're not called to avoid <laughs> the laws of the land uh romans 13 12 1 to 2 says obey the government for god is the one who put it there there is no government anywhere that God has not placed in power. So those who refuse to obey the law of the land are refusing to obey God, and punishment will follow. At times, yes. Now, there are laws that contradict God's laws, and then we are, we can, I'm not going to say rebel, but we are allowed to part, protest those, and peacefully. So it's a law-abiding protest. But what Homeboy was doing was not that. It's, it really is that simple. And it's, it's frustrating to me to see brothers and sisters try to call that out and then have their faith challenged and questioned and belittled. So, basically, here's in plain language. Um... The Calgary police shared that he was arrested on Tuesday and was charged in relation to the following warrants. Failing to wear a face covering, which I understand people are like, that's extreme. And I can get that. But those were laws. As much as you might not like it, it's a law. <laughs> and it's not one that goes against anything that God said. Because also the vaccine is not... The mark of the beast. It's not. <laughs> My gosh. I might have to do a, a COVID conspiracy theory like just release video that never gets released just to get this off my, some of this stuff off my chest. Um, and disobeying a, a court order. It's that simple. He's breaking the law, and that's why he's being charged. It would happen if it wasn't a believer. Do you know how many non-believers have been arrested for breaking the same laws? It's not about the faith. And then in May, he was arrested for organizing an illegal gathering, as well as promoting and attending an illegal gathering. They held church services that flouted the rules on masking and physical distancing. Wanting to have church services, that's fine. We've been in a stage where you could have reduced church services, which I understand sucks, but there are legit actual reasons. Heck, my home, my, my home church is connected to two old age homes, and there were outbreaks. And if the church did not follow with those mandates, that could have been worse. So much worse. Like, I get that we're, we're, we're frustrated with the mandates, but it's their laws. <laughs> this is, 
Yeah, no, that basically, I, I just go around in circles, but it, this has been building up for a while. And when I see Christians sharing this misinformation, it, it frustrates me because that is not persecution. There, again, don't get me wrong, there are persecuted, <laughs> there is Christian persecution. Now in the West, it's different. It is. It's mostly verbal and it's mostly belittling, but it's not enshrined in law. And it's very, very extremely rare that, uh, that it's ever violent or <laughs> deadly or where they're detained for their faith or they're arrested for their faith or abducted for faith reasons. Heck, I'll link an article to Forbes, which is a very reputable <laughs> website uh, that's consistently ranked well for actual legit reporting, and it doesn't have that much of a bias. And before anybody jumps to a conclusion about its bias, its bias is slightly left. So it's not a, a full right lean thing where it's like, as soon as anything involving political correctness is involved, it's, oh, this is persecution, which no, it's not. I get it, but it's not. So yeah, I guess this is more of a rant, but it, I, I kind of feel it's needed one. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are called <laughs> to follow the rules of the Lord but also we are instructed to obey the laws of the land, even laws we don't agree with. And as much as we might not like some of the laws, this one in particular, these COVID restriction ones are not in violation of any of God's laws. So there's no grounds for even peacefully protesting. I mean, you can, that is your right, but it's not in violation of, of any scriptural law and anything I've seen trying to argue such is twisting scripture something that we're mad when we see other people do so we shouldn't permiss it when it's about something we're, we're, we're okay with twisting scripture anytime is bad <laughs> so is it unfortunate that Pastor Arthur has been arrested yes is it frustrating for me as a believer that this is a bad look for Christians and a bad look, a bad representation of what we're supposed to do. Oh my goodness. Yes. Will I be praying for him? Absolutely. As much as it frustrates me, I'm not trying to condemn the man, but is this persecution? No. No, it's not. Are churches being unfairly sanctioned? No, no, they're not. The mosques and any other faith group are going through the exact same restrictions. I get that we're frustrated, and I get that it's incredibly encouraged biblically for, for church to be together, and I am fully empathetic towards that. And I get that a lot of people can't get the same experience through virtual gatherings. But attend small groups, follow the restriction, uh, like follow the guidelines. So many pastors have worked hard to get it at this point where <laughs> restrictions can be lessened for churches or allowances possibly can be made. Don't undo it like this. <sighs> that's all pray for the guy but also no this isn't persecution a link to the Forbes article because make no mistake there is persecution around the world for for believers it does happen we don't see it as much in the West we really don't because we really don't experience it as much in the West and then we'll try to point to stuff like this in a self-fulfilling prophecy like Oh, if I stand my ground, I'm going to get arrested. And then you do. And then, oh, I said I'd get persecuted and look what happened. Not being persecuted, you're breaking the law. <laughs>
It's it's that simple. <sighs> All that being said, I hope this was at least somewhat enjoyable for you. I know it's not my normal tone, but I'm 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 frustrated. <laughs> And I'd like to think I kept that loving, though firm. Hopefully I did. All that being said, have a wonderful day. Love you guys. Praying for y'all. Praying for this dude. God bless. Peace. Hey, everyone. This is Chris, and you're watching One Cross Video. Um, today's going to be a shorter video. I actually had something else planned, uh, but eh, I just decided not to. We'll see if I ever release that one. Um, and I just got a plug. I am rocking a freaking Serpentera t-shirt because Serpentera is awesome. Uh, Power Rangers is awesome. And, uh, also I'm rocking a, a One Cross Radio hat, which you can pick up off of my Redbubble page. I'll attach a link in the description. <laughs> Sorry, just had to quickly plug. Uh, and today's shorter video is about censorship and in particular online censorship. Um, it's a, a, a I'll say a, a, a heady topic because it ebbs and flows, especially around elections, which, uh, Canada, we just went through one and <laughs> not much changed, uh, which it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> prayer, pray for the leaders still. I'm not thrilled that the dude is still in, but pray for our leaders. Um, and my joke, just because I'm not a fan of the party, this it, it's just a joke, my libertarian friends. Um, but I saw a lot of people being like, well, nothing changed. That was a waste of money and all that. And eh, fair, maybe. Um, but the BBC lost its one and only seat. So there's a silver lining. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to get that joke in. I'm not a fan of that party, but I pray for them. Um, as I pray for every party, as we all should. Because scripturally, we're supposed to pray for our leaders. Did a video on this. <laughs> um, but the reason this came up is I've seen the discussion happening online, on Reddit, on Instagram, uh, conversations I've had in person with people. And I just thought, you know what, why not? Let's, let's talk about it. Um, so one main thing people often cite is like, oh, hey, um, hey, uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or whatever, they're more biased against the right. Um, they censor the right more often than they do the left. That's not true. <laughs> I know it might feel like that. But that's not true. Uh, and the reason being, let me see. Uh, I've got an article here uh, that addresses it. And there's a number. You can, you can look it up. Um, there's been a number of studies done that show that this isn't the case. But basically, um, here we go. Here's the thing. Um, Right-wing social media influencers, I'm, I'm reading from Politico, um, which is one of the more unbiased news sites. They're highly rated for the reliability of what they're reporting. And in terms of bias, if there is, it's a slight le lean left. So it might not be 100% center, but they are also, the bias isn't huge. Uh, we're not talking Fox News or ONN or any of that nonsense or or Vox with their far left lane or uh, dare I say BuzzFeed. Um, I like your quizzes, not your news. Anyways, um, so Politico, Politico is well rated. Um, so this part um, in particular, right wing social media influences can conservative media outlets and other GOP supporters dominate online discussions around two of the election's hottest issues. And this was written back in uh, 2020, around the time of the U.S. election. Um, so the two issues were the Black Lives Matter movement and voter fraud. And according to 
a review of Facebook posts, Instagram feeds, Twitter messages, and conversations on two popular message boards, the right dominated this, and their lead isn't close. As racial protests engulfed the nation after George Floyd's death, users shared the most viral right-wing social media content more than 10 times as often as the most popular liberal posts, frequently associating the Black Lives Matter movement with violence and accusing Democrats like Joe Biden of supporting riots. People also shared conservatives' most read claims of rampant voter fraud roughly twice as often as they did liberals, or the traditional media's outlets' discussions on the issue, this analyst found. The conservatives' tactics included spinning mainstream media coverage on voting irregularities into elaborate conspiracy theories, sometimes echoed by Trump, and that... The theories were that Democratic lawmakers are trying to steal November's election. (sighs) We unfortunately saw firsthand what spreading of misinformation like that can lead to. So, why does it seem like the right is censored more often than the left? Like it said... The viral stuff from the right or the extreme stuff from the right simply gets more eyeballs. It gets a lot more attention. So as these big things get a lot of that attention, Daily Wire, friggin' Shapiro, which, ugh, ugh, not him as a human being, although I'm sure some find it, um, but his presentation tone, I can't stand the arrogance Anyways, um, the clickbaity stuff like that, that yes, you get on the left, but it simply does not spread as much. Um, And it doesn't go as cuckoo bananas. Um, So because stuff like Daily Wire and ONN and Fox News deliberately doing stuff to sensationalize and um, make it clickbaity, that stuff gets removed and a lot more people see it. So, because a lot more people see it, they just simply assume that it's targeted more towards the right. This political Politico study shows that's not the case. Numerous other studies have been done. Heck, um, let me see here. MediaMatters.org has four studies showing that this is not the case. But the consistent thing is because the right-leaning pages gain a lot more traction and get a lot more eyeballs, they're, when they're spreading deliberate misinformation or using what is clearly defined as hate language or includes stuff that goes against the guidelines, and we're not just talking about hate speech, we're not just talking about like, oh, this political opinion. Some of the stuff from say Fox News, not intentionally, would include stuff that gives out people's personal information. That gets removed right away and that's wonderful. Um, There's a wider discussion to be had about how much social media has (laughs) access to our personal information. But homies were also to blame for that because we either don't read the, (laughs) don't read the bloody guidelines (laughs) because they're like, friggin' this long, um, and we just want to get to our scrolling and our pictures and our funny videos, um, but yeah, they do shady stuff, but we also, we sign up for this stuff, um, and the other thing is, people will say, like, well, this violates our freedom of speech, no, it doesn't, (laughs) and the reason I say that is because this is not a public forum. As, as much as we, as much as yes, the wide public uses Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, like heck, this is going on IGTV, YouTube, my website, and all that. I am going, I promote my stuff through Podbean, which goes to Apple, Spotify, and all that. This isn't to plug that, it's to give an example. All of these are private corporations. All of these are not public forums. While they distribute 
public information, the rules and guidelines are decided by them. And as a private company, they can choose to look at some of the stuff you're putting out there, what it includes, how it's presented, or how it's presented is an issue that they are working on. Thankfully, they just need to get much, much better at it. Um, but the point is, it's private. As much as you're making the information public, the service itself is private and they can choose, it's their prerogative, what stuff is or isn't allowed. So are you being censored? Sure. But you're not, your freedom of speech is not being violated because freedom of speech currently does not apply like the freedom of speech protections does not apply on services like YouTube, like any social media stuff, because it's pri a private company owns it. So like, heck, if I, if one of my videos on, on IGTV or a podcast got removed or pod being updated, it's stuff. Cause I've talked about things from a Christian perspective. Now, if they pod bean is not this, they, they, they are incredibly unbiased. There's podcasts of, Every sort. My eyes look crazy right there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm very tired and anxious. It's getting that energy out. Um, Podbean doesn't do this, but if they ever, ever updated their, their services to a point where it's like, hey, you can't say this thing. If I still choose to say it, like, yes, that's my freedom of speech, but they are the ones who have it on there. They can enact their <laughs> borderline creative control. Not really, but you get what I mean. Uh, content control and remove it. And that's not, that's not restricting my freedom of speech. Because also, freedom of speech <laughs> does not mean freedom from consequence. <laughs> You're free to say stupid, hateful things, just as you're free to say great, uplifting things. I much more encourage the latter, because um, the former is bad. <laughs> it just is. You're free to do it, but that doesn't mean you should do it, and that doesn't mean there won't be consequences when you do it. And also, it protects people from the government going in on their speech, not individuals or private companies and a lot of the big people who've gotten deplatformed while they might be on the right look at the vicious look at the vicious completely false antagonistic rhetoric they've been using alex jones being deplatformed makes total sense um freaking donald trump being deplatformed is only a good thing look through his tweets well you can't anymore thankfully but people screenshot it and it was bad. It had a hand in what happened in January. So there we go. I just wanted to talk about that. Um, yeah, that's it. If you're feeling like you're being censored, you can always try to repeal. A lot of this has to do with how sites do things. And the difficulty is, I kind of talked about it earlier when I said they need to do better, is YouTube is a good example of this. At times when they've gone to an AI algorithm, they're putting in certain keywords and phrases and all that, which indiscriminately will ban content. The stuff on the right might have it in the title more, it might be more clickbaity, although it happens on the left. But heck, there was a lawsuit from, I think, 15 LGBTQ plus, um, content creators on YouTube uh, a couple of years ago because they felt their freedom of speech was being restricted because their videos and channels were shut down and demonetized because the algorithm just saw the stuff. It doesn't catch context. So if the stuff <laughs> is in the thing, it will ban indiscriminately. And that's also the downside because other th channels talking about it where it's like, hey, look, this is just an informed discussion it was still there and the AI just removed. So look into how you can put stuff up within the guidelines and yeah, research. It's just easy and fun. Anyways, all that being said, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and yeah, you guys rock. Praying for you all. Yeah.
God bless my friends. Peace. And you're watching one cross video. <laughs> The amount of times I've almost started a podcast with that when there's no video element. <sighs> Sorry, car's going by. All right, let's go, loons. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. And today, uh, <laughs> the title may or may not have <laughs> nothing to do with the topic. I haven't come up with the title yet because... Well, I want to jokingly call it Time to Go Mobile, because uh, if you can't tell, we are mobile. We're walking. Uh, Jill and I, my wonder wife, have been blessed with the, uh, the opportunity to come up to a cottage. We were here last year for our anniversary. Um, we were supposed to come earlier this year, but uh, another lockdown happened, so that got canceled. Um, but now we are up here. It is gorgeous and just so, so good for my mental health. It's, that's where especially it's been such a blessing for both of us. Um, like, not like everything's now hunky-dory and magically better, but I'll be honest, job hunting extendedly, um, job hunting anytime is stressful. Uh, job hunting during a pandemic where it's even more difficult and so many other stresses make it even worse uh and then when you've been doing it for over a year it's uh it's it's pretty rough i'm not gonna lie uh, so being up here and away from all that has just been uh, it's just been so good and i'm so thankful to the lord that we've been able to get up here and another car. Actually, another two. Three. So I'll just be uh, walking along the side here. Oh, four. Oh my goodness, it's a caravan. It's a caravan, y'all. <laughs> um, it's also been interesting, because while I've been up here, uh, I've just had, like, you've had the chance to unplug, which has been so good. Um, and I'll be honest, this is my fourth take on an OCR short, because I'm like, I want to record one while I'm up here, and it'll air by the time we're back in Hamilton. Uh, it's going to drop Monday, we head back Sunday. Um, but, y'all know me, you know on the podcast and on here, and if you don't know me, I hope you, you stick around and you get to know me. Uh, cause I, I love what we do on the show, um, on the show and on the podcast. Um, and I've heard people really dig it and it's, it's a good avenue for them. And that's something I'm, I'm praying for. Um, anyways, I'm just going down a rabbit hole. Uh, you'll know that I'm very, very much about being loving to each other and love your neighbor as yourself. Whoops. Kind of slipped. Um, <laughs> everybody's looking at me weird because I'm talking to my phone as I walk. Um, yeah, very much love your neighbor as yourself. And the reason I decided to go with this instead of the last, the, not the last two, the first two takes was I wasn't doing that. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't be saying, hey, we should all do this, and then I not do it. Uh, it's not good to do rules for thee, but not for me. Um, it's hypocritical, <laughs> and uh, it's bogus. Um, so then I got on the topic, but I rambled a lot more than I am now, so I'm going to try to get it concise. Um, <laughs> 15 minute videos is, is difficult for me because I'm long winded. Um, but the topic is from based on the scripture, Ephesians 4.15, speak the truth in love. Speak truth in love. Um, and that's a that's a tough thing to do sometimes. And I've been guilty of being on both sides of the pendulum. Um, and by that I mean because people will see speak the truth in love and they'll want to do that, but 
we might get too gentle, too meek, um, which are, those aren't bad things, but if you do either of them too much and you're not actually calling out when it is the right time and you are the right person to do so, that's not good. You need to speak the truth and truth can be painful. It can be awkward. It can be uncomfortable. Um, having your stuff called out on when it should be, it's not comfortable. It's not fun. It's not fun doing it. And I, like I've done it with loved ones when those criteria were met. It was the right time. My motives were right. Um, and I was within the right people to do so. And it's that way when loved ones are doing it with you. And it's a needed thing. I'd argue it's part of the ironing, sharpening iron process. It's part of the, it's very much like the sanctification process um, <laughs> that Christ has us go through where our old sinful selves and sinful ways are being stripped away. We're being fine-tuned. That ain't always comfortable. It's often not. Um, so it's, it's important that we do that. However, it's also important, extremely important, that we do it right. Sometimes the pendulum can swing too far one way where we are being, in a way, too timid. Uh, like I said, too gentle, too meek, to the point where we're like, all right, I can't do that. I can't call that out because that'll be, that's not loving. Where, no, it is. How we do it is especially important, but we don't not do it. Unless we know we're the wrong person to do it. That's part of it. Checking our motives. Is it about me? Is this about my, my stuff? Am I doing it to be like, hey, I'm holier than you and I'm right, you're wrong? Then the issue is you, homie. Um, that's not the right time. And you're not the right person, son. Um, but if it's genuinely about them, their well-being, their spiritual well-being, how they how this is, their behavior is not only harming them, especially if they can't see it, but <laughs> harming others as well. Again, whether or not they can see it. Um, you need to do that. You need to call that out. But again, you gotta do it right. The pendulum, one way is too soft, and the other way is in numerous ways just as bad and arguably worse you can't do it too harshly. Like I said, truths can be very, very painful. They can be uncomfortable. Having stuff called out, especially when it's true, isn't fun. It's why we so naturally try to show the best part of ourselves hide our struggles, or make ourselves look a certain way because we don't want others to see how we sometimes can be. I think that really plays into it. Um, but sometimes you almost get that zeal, like, oh, I have to call out. I have to do this. And the internet and social media has had a very negative impact on this, um, where it's you're not being firm. You're not even being a jerk. You're in dickish territory. Because <laughs> there is a difference. And if, you, if you're offended by that, I do apologize. I never aim to offend. But I do think there is a difference between being a jerk and being a colossal dick. <laughs> it's just true. Um, and again, if that language is offensive, I do apologize. I'm not trying to be offensive. Um, sorry, I'm out of shape and I'm walking up a hill. <laughs> yeah. We can sometimes take it too far to the other side where we're stripping away any of the love. 
and we're just calling out, not even being firm, just being antagonistic, unintentionally sometimes, but antagonistic nonetheless. Oh, I'm out of shape. <laughs> oh, it's a lovely day though. And we can't do that either. When you're calling somebody out in love, one, like I've said, you gotta do it right. And then two, you gotta check your tone. You can be firm and brutally honest and still be loving. But if you're not, if you're not in those moments, and you're just being a dick, <laughs> you're just being harmful, you are making things worse, I'd argue, actively. You could be pushing that person away from Christ, away from <laughs> the love and grace of him, and showing others that, oh yeah, this behavior is fine, and it's not. <sighs> There's that, I can't remember who said it, but it's an old quote, and it was even atta attached uh, to the front of the excellent DC Talk song, What If I Stumble? Wonderful song. And I believe the quote goes, the greatest single cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips, but then walk out that door and deny him by their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. And over the past year, and change, but I'll say especially over the past year, as things have gotten so angsty, I'm seeing a lot, way too much, and at times even in myself, uh, which I will call out, or I'll decide not to release videos, not to save a face, because I'll be brutally honest about my flaws, um, but because am I representing Christ in this, or is this about me being like, haha, I know better? If it's the latter, I'm not going to release it. If I can't be loving and firm, if I'm just getting into that jerkish, dickish territory, then it's best I not release it. If I can't <laughs> share what's on my heart as the way Christ would, then I shouldn't do it. Christ didn't shy away from saying, go and sin no more. He didn't shy away from his criticisms towards the church and the Pharisees and the Sadducees at the time, but he was never directly antagonistic. And too often we become that. And brothers and sisters and fellow Christians, People are watching. They see that. I again challenge you uh, to listen to the excellent podcast, um, The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill, done through Christianity Today. It's phenomenal, it's challenging, and it's heartbreaking. And hearing how many people walked away from the faith after experiencing what was going on at Mars Hill really shakes you. And it should cause pause and examination and plenty of prayer about how we live, how we express the gospel, and how we speak the truth in love. And that's, that's what I wanted to share today. It, pause and pray. See what your motivations are, because if they're for you, that ain't it, chief hand everything over to the Lord. <laughs> All right. I hope you heard me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you heard my heart. Have a wonderful day. Take care and God bless my friends. Peace. Hey everyone, this is Chris and you're watching One Cross Video and we're calling an audible. <laughs> uh, I, had, I had already had a video lined up uh, I just hadn't edited it, um, 
but this came to my attention a couple days ago um, through a friend of mine um, from down in the States. And I, I decided to take a couple days to record, to record this, mostly because my initial takes were not takes that would be friendly. Um, and this still probably won't be that friendly. Uh, this is in the spirit of lovingly firm calling out, and I'm going to try to keep it as loving as possible. Because it's, uh, I'll be honest, to me it's bat crap insane. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that this is a thing. But that being said, I, I just want to do some, I guess, in a way, quick housekeeping. Um, something I was kind of convicted about last night, and especially after listening to a podcast where the only context and only times uh, churches and Christians were brought up, especially evangelicals, um, were in negative contexts, and that, that didn't sit right with me. Um, now, that's not to say that evangelicals and Christians and churches are perfect by no means. In any way, shape, or form, is that true? Um, and that's not to say that those bad behaviors uh, shouldn't be addressed, shouldn't be called out, and shouldn't be worked on. Um, but the conviction came in was for me where I was like, you know what? I I tend to do a lot of the calling out and I, I stand by that and it's something I'm gonna continue to do, but I also haven't done a fair job in actually representing the good that the church and Christians and yes, evangelicals, the, the, target, <laughs> the target group for a lot of people uh, does. So, viewer, I, I lovingly challenge you to look into what the church does on a local level, on a, on a federal level, for lack of any other terms, um, and at a humanitarian level. Christians, and yes, evangelicals, <laughs> uh, can be on the absolute, tend to be on the front line when it comes to natural disasters in terms of sending financial aid and humanitarian aid. Look at what people do on missions trips. It's not just like going in and trying to sell them Jesus. Like building roads, building homes in places that don't have them, having teams ready consistently to go do this, like meeting physical, practical needs and spiritual needs, bringing clear water, teaching, helping, uh, local churches in my immediate area, food banks, clothing banks, hot meal programs, uh, shelter relief, funds for shelters, funds for people who are low income and ad like providing addiction services. The church does so much good. So as much as I might call out the behaviors that I'm still going to do that because they need to be called out because we need to improve. Um, we need to get better. But make no mistake, the church does a lot of good. It absolutely does. So if it ever seemed like I'm only beating up on the church, my honest, sincere apologies. I love the church. It's why I get so frustrated it. So frustrated with it and my, my be fellow believers when we do stuff wrong that we frankly should know better about. Um, but make no mistake, we do a lot of good. And that doesn't mean we excuse the bad, but it also doesn't mean all we do is bad. So I lovingly challenge you, look around your community, find out what your church does to help that community. And I guarantee, I'm willing to guarantee you, it's a lot. Okay, now, with that, that out of the way, with the niceties out of the way, <laughs> uh, today's episode, is, it could be subtitled like, get your crap together, America. <laughs> because, uh, 
that's that's basically how I look at this. <laughs> Uh, it came to, to my attention, like I said, through a friend, and I'm actually going to share the, the infographic. Um, I'll make sure I attach it in this somehow, maybe where my hands are. I don't know, we'll, we'll see in post, but it's going to be on the screen. Um, not only did I now just learn recently that y'all don't have paid maternity leave. Um, actually, wait, no, that was the, that, that was the more upsetting part. Um, <laughs> actually, no, that is very upsetting, but Biden comes through like, we're going to make it 12 weeks, which I'm going to say as a Canadian, as an outsider, that's not enough, but it's something. So that's great, but it's being whittled down to a month. Not only is it... it my thought process was, hold up, it's being whittled down to a month, and even double holder upper, you don't have this? You don't have paid maternity leave? What the heck, dudes? I don't understand. <laughs> what? America, explain. Explain. I don't think you can, because I, I, I don't think there's an actual rational explanation. It, it doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense whatsoever to me that you do not have paid parental leave. Sure, we can say most often maternal leave, but... Um, whatever, I, I can't remember what the, the father's term is, but that's becoming a thing, especially in countries that do this right thing. <laughs> and I'm stating unequivocally, I think this is the absolute right thing. So I think it's wrong that your, <laughs> your government isn't doing this already. And it's gonna be like hey we got a month a month is nothing <laughs> like what is this <laughs> makes no sense and then i went down the rabbit hole and started learning how much it costs to deliver a baby really really <laughs> Your, your healthcare system frightens me, Merka. And my, my many American friends, I hope this doesn't seem like an attack on you individually, because I love all y'all individually. I just, I honestly, I don't, I don't understand. As an outside perspective, I do not understand how any of these choices are looked at as a good thing. Or how there's something we should keep pushing for. Or the, the other cases of something we need to actively vote against. What? It makes no sense. None. Like, a, a headline that is completely accurate is, yes... The U.S. is the only industrialized country to not guaranteed paid family leave. That, that's messed up. That's messed up. Like, you're lucky if your insurance covers part of that, which is also messed up. Um, delivery, delivery fees are nuts. Even if you have insurance, if you don't have insurance, they're astronomically higher. What? What? <laughs> oh, boy. Sorry, give me a second. Okay, so. There are delivery fees in Canada. I'll grant you that. But they are if you are a, visit a visitor or a tourist or someone who is not a, a Canadian citizen. 
Um, so if you're not already getting healthcare from one of the many, like from our provinces, and those plans can, can be different. Some are, uh, I believe, more expensive than others. There might be more charges, but we, we don't have, like our citizens don't have fees. <laughs> We're not getting charged $10,000. To 10 to 20 if we're insured <laughs> what it's how how does this make sense honestly how how please please explain it to me i don't understand your healthcare system i really don't i don't understand like it's it is so profit focused that that's mind-bogglingly afraid uh, frightening to me i've even seen some takes where it's like well the doctors work harder because they get paid better like that's no that it's health care it's about curing people <laughs> the incentive shouldn't be how much my life it, like oh i'm going to care less for people if my, if i'm not getting paid more no and if that's your motive find a different field man <laughs> this is the most ranty episode i've done because it's just this is baffling to me Baff, yeah, baffling baffling to me it is for me a hundred percent wrong that this is happening like i i don't understand how <laughs> i actually don't get it like, I live in a country where if someone gets pregnant, their job is covered and they don't lose income. Like, it, it, that should be a given. That should absolutely be a given. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever that if you are bringing, <laughs> like, you're bringing life into this world, which is by and large encouraged... <laughs> rightfully so that then oh but we're we're not gonna get like okay we might guarantee you won't lose your job but we're going to take away the money that you get from that job that goes towards you know living as you now have a life an additional life that costs a lot of money we're we're not gonna support that we're not going to support you financially during this. What? Like, there, there are so many things, so many issues that tie into that. <sighs> like, you, you could tie in abortion rates to this. The cost of delivering a child, the cost of, the cost of having a child after the fact. But so many things are wrong with this. <laughs> And it just, it makes no sense. This is a systemic wrong. <laughs> and if anybody tries to be like, oh, well, like some socialist country. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to say the socialist country, they're in the right on this. They are. How are you going to claim you're the best country when you don't take care of your most vulnerable populations and mothers and fathers and newborns. Yeah, it makes no sense. Anyways, that's this video. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you heard through my rants. I love you, but it makes no sense. Anyways, have a great day. Peace. Hey everyone, this is Chris, and you're watching One Cross Video, and we are back for another uh, episode in our uh, our OCR Shorts series, um, which uh, at one point the thought was like, hey, we'll make that exclusive to Instagram or something, but clearly that's not the case. I am posting this everywhere, um, which is just a fun way of saying everywhere. Um, why? I don't know. It's fun. I like having fun sometimes. <laughs>
Uh, anyways, so just some housekeeping items before we get into the topic. Uh, wanted to quickly shout out uh, in earnest um, and uh, Paul Demir. Um, Paul, I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. Uh, they were guests on the podcast um, during our first year. And they have recently dropped a single, which is a cover of Coldplay's Fix You. Look it up on uh, on Spotify. I'll actually try to link it in the description. Just, just fantastic. Um, both are wonderful musicians and wonderful people. Um, so do yourself the favor of checking that out. I also want to plug a number of our friends. Um, Nathan Marchand from uh, Monster Island Film Vault, Vault um, Geek Devotions, Faith and Fandom, Hector, my boy. I don't know if you're seeing this, but I love you and I love your ministry. You guys are awesome. Cardboard Coin and Ia, I'm just shouting out because I want to. <laughs> uh, and the final plug will be, I highly recommend this book. <laughs> uh it is the Fantastic 42, A Fellowship Facing Doom with Hope. It is a fantastic devotional that I've plugged before and I'm plugging again. I got to be a part of it and it's been wonderful to read. Um, everybody did such a great job. I, I am going to include myself, but not in the big enough way. I'm not, my chapters aren't my favorite, although they're good. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to plug it and thank everybody. And back to the shout outs, Bex from Redeemed Otaku. You're such a wonderful sister in Christ. I love you. You rock. Um, I love all y'all who I mentioned. <laughs> and of course, shout out to Luna, who is napping adorably on the couch. Um, as you can tell, I'm back home. Our last video, I was out and about. Um, it's been an adjustment being home. Um, Luna loved it up there. We all loved it up there. Um, I got to write while I was up there. The writing bug and the itch has hit again. Um, so I gotta, I gotta keep doing that. Anyways, on to today's topic. Wow, I uh, really dragged that one out. It's like it's an episode of the podcast. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So today's topic, we are looking at the uh the gnostic gospels and this will be a short video um and i know it's called shorts but i'm not i doubt i'm even going to make it to that crunch time of 14 minutes and the reason i'm talking about it is oh the camera's dropping uh the reason i'm gonna talk about it is i've kind of been visiting it recently i've been going through some of the stuff i don't know now i'll be straight up i ain't a scholar um, or a biblical scholar anyway, um, but I am a lifelong Christian, <laughs> um, and I've been blessed with numerous uh, friends who are pastors, theologians, and biblical scholars, um, so I've been able to speak to them and, and do some research into this. Um, now, I know why these aren't included in canon, and I'll be straight up, and this is going to sound more dismissive than I want it to, the Gnostic Gospels read a lot like fanfic. Um, now, sometimes there is good fanfic. There's there's some enjoyable stuff there, but it's fanfic nonetheless. And there is reasons why they, they aren't included um, within the canon. And it's not because, oh, the church don't like it. Um, it's be because it's not relevant <laughs> to the gospel. Um, so... A summation is the Gnostic Gospels saw no connection between Jesus and the nation of Israel and the acts of God in the Old Testament. The reason, those reasons may be, may be the biggest reasons. Um, they're not in the Bible. And the other ones are throughout most of the Gnostic Gospels. Um, it's, it's not about Jesus sharing the message and the word like that's there, but the, the whole point of it in these Gnostic gospels is Jesus having private meetings with some of his disciples and giving them secret knowledge, a Gnosis, if you will, um, to pass along to others in a secret way. And this doesn't, 
that doesn't line up. That doesn't line up with who Jesus was. That doesn't line up with the relationship with the apostles. Um, now, I'll quickly try to see, just because some people might be like, uh, Chris, why is... Well, the canon. <laughs> now, part of this is... Um, I'll, I'll base this off the New Testament, because these Gnostic Gospels would be within that that time um here are the criteria for determining a new testament canon book um each book was written by an apostle or closely associated with an apostle the contents of these books were revelatory in nature um these books were universally recognized by the church in their teaching and preaching ministry and these books were considered inspired because they bore the marks of inspiration. Uh, how these books were also decided was there are 66 books in the Bible, and these were the ones that were universally agreed on. Now, that's not to say there weren't some books that other people held to, but they were not included in the official canon. Um, the Luther Bible has, I can't remember which books, but it's got a couple books um, that aren't in the official canon. Um, the Catholics have a number of extra stuff. Um, and some of that stuff isn't bad. It's just not recognized as canon. Um, I do want to find the other thing I had. Um, let's see. So... Just to add a little bit more information about the uh, the Gnostic texts, um, and I'll link to this article. It's uh, from Cold Case Christianity. Um, so a lot of this was stuff that was kind of added centuries later. Um, interesting facts is the the Gospels are all dated to be within the lifetime of the apostles um, within that century. So it hadn't had chances to become legend that just got passed down. And a very, very interesting um, aspect of the Dead Sea Scrolls is the Gospel of John used to be challenged because they were like, oh, there's language in here that doesn't date to around that time. It doesn't make sense. We're assuming a lot of these things were added in post like years later, and the Dead Sea Scrolls showed that that was not the case. The language was relevant to language being used even before Christ. Um, and it's got the entire manuscript of Isaiah and earthing lines up. And that's crazy interesting. The Gnostic Gospels don't have anything like that. Um, they seem to be trying to put in Gnostic teachings um and again showing jesus having secret conversations that's not how he rolled <laughs> sorry i just thought of the song of he rolled like this like that that's not how he went <laughs> um okay sorry i'm just gonna add some more stuff all right so an example i'll use is from the uh why we shouldn't trust the non-canonical gospels attributed to Peter. So I'll just read, because this dude words it better, much better than I can, as evidenced by that horrible sentence. Why we shouldn't trust the non-canonical gospel attributed to Mark. The secret gospel of Mark is described in a letter attributed to Clement of Alexandria, although this alleged letter has been attacked as forgery by many scholars. The letter is the only source referring to the uh the gospel and there are no existing manuscripts clement was allegedly writing to another christian leader named theodore advising him about the existence of more expansive version of the gospel of mark containing additional stories and sayings of jesus these this allegedly extended version of mark's gospel was known only to jesus innermost circle this stuff doesn't line up. Uh, and it's not it's just Chris's opinion. Um, the deciding of canon and how things 
are translated and how things go. There's a lot of work put into this. It's not just some Da Vinci Code fanfic where, like, the higher-ups of the church are like, oh, no, this one secret. Nah, it, it doesn't line up. <laughs> um, it is compared. It is studied heavily. There are fragments. There are entire holdings of original biblical scriptures for stuff to compare to. The Gospels were written as direct sayings, either written directly by the apostles themselves or people who worked directly with, with them and it got their seal of approval. The majority, if not all the stuff, now I can't say every single thing because I haven't fully checked out every single part of the Gnostic Gospels, but I'm willing to say, and definitely based on the ones I've listened to, especially uh, the Gospel of Judas, that, what? <laughs> it's just, it's a trip. And there's like very little of it. So you... the canonical Gospels have existence. They're there. And they're not there in part. They're there in full. They were written. They've been verified. The Gnostic Gospels haven't. The few that exist are fragments. You can't prove it was written. There, there is no proof. There is no evidence that it was written by the authors they're claiming the authorship to. The writing styles, the teaching, every, it goes against everything that those apostles did that, that is documented. So that's, that's this. I'm sorry it wasn't as prepped as my other, <laughs> my other videos, but this is what we got. And I hope it, I hope it's good. Like I said, I encourage you to look into this yourselves. And I encourage you to, if you're a believer, pray through this, pray through this as you look. Um, if you're a non-believer, I challenge you to look into this because the majority of stuff about it, it's presented as like, oh, it's a secret and it. That's part of the appeal that it goes against the mainstream Christianity. But this is a legit reason why it goes against. It doesn't line up and it's not about shuffling around to make it in the view. There's no consistency. It's not written the same. It's not the same voice. It's not the same tone. It's not the same style. And yes, even Paul's styles changed, but there was still a commonality to them in his epistles. That ain't here. So there we go. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you have a wonderful day. Hope you learned something from this. God bless, my friends. Take care. Peace. Hey, everyone. This is Chris, and you're watching One Cross Video. And if you see me looking to what is... I'm not sure if it's your left. I know it's my left. It's because Luna is just over the shot. She's lying down on the couch being like, what you doing? Anyways, um, sorry, my throat's a little sore. Um, I recently got a new job, praise be to God. I'm so thankful for it, but it also does involve talking pretty much eight hours straight. <laughs> And uh, with the weather being in flux like it has been, my allergies are messing with me, so um, my throat's a bit sore, so if I sound a little bit off, that's why. Or if my energy's lower, that's also why. Um, it's a customer service gig, um, which is, I'm not going to lie, I'm having a lot of fun. Um, but it's also a lot of high energy. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, with with the anxiety and everything with the mental health it's also it's now like hey i'm gonna mess with you you are at an energy deficit um but i digress uh so today's ocr short is going to be focused on a um podcast that's really blown up online and it's one that i thoroughly thoroughly enjoy um it's one that I've recommended to people. I've loved discussing with people because I think there's much, much we can learn from it. But there have been some uh, fair criticisms towards it. And then at times, stuff that I would say is, is a little less unfair. 
or a little more unfair um, or or just not fully informed. Um, and some of it I understand why. Like, I'm not, this isn't a, a, I'm not throwing rocks or anything at anybody. Um, but with some people, because this, uh, this podcast, uh, it is, it's called The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. Um, and it is a, uh, Mars Hill was a quite famous megachurch that more or less imploded. <laughs> due to uh, the actions of um, one one pastor, Mark Driscoll, who is currently pastoring a church. Uh, my hope and prayer uh, is that he is not the same man that, uh, that, that he learned from his mistakes. He opened himself up to rebuke from others and the Lord, and he took it to heart. That's, that's my hope and prayer. Um, and that's something I'm continually doing, especially as I listen to this podcast. Um, I used to be a, a, a fan of Driscoll. Um, I didn't always like what he, he had to say or necessarily how he always said it. But when I was a younger man, having a pastor who wasn't afraid to address certain topics in point blank terms that that made it accessible to me um especially was when at the time i was using similar phrases um it was almost like look if you're going to be bashful about this like and you're dancing around and you can't even say the word of what we're talking about am i going to gain anything from you um so he he did have an appeal um but towards uh, 2013 into 2014, a lot of very ungodly behaviors was unearthed. And through this podcast, oh my goodness, it's heartbreaking. Um, but in a weird way, it is also encouraging um, and a real, real opportunity for not just churches and people in in leadership positions at churches or anything uh not just them for i'd argue for all believers um because there's a lot to be educated about and it does it answers some things especially because it's easy for us on the outside to be like or someone who's been tracking these bad behaviors uh to be like how do they not see it they must be willfully ignorant and you're finding out through this how that's not the case. Um, so the main the main criticism now, um, if one viewer in particular is watching, homie, this is not a uh, this isn't a shout out or a rebuke to you in any negative way, shape, or form. You and I had that uh, had a wonderfully in depth conversation about it, and I understand exactly where you're coming from. Uh, this is more so. For people, when I, I see believers just seeing like, oh, hey, this 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 paints this paints the church in a bad light, so we need to squash this, and then quick to label it um, gossip and slander. And while both of those things are are definitely sin, um, and while people can just be coming to the podcast for that sin because they want the they want that hot goss it fuels them it gives them energy and all that i mean in a weird way we're all we're all wired for drama um and if you examine your heart as you're listening to this and that's at all uh the reason you're going to it and or the um or it's making you want to do those things podcast isn't for you so I'd say examine your heart as you're listening to this if you're if you're a believer. Um, it should not that should not be the reason you're going to it. Go to it with an open heart, an open mind, and <laughs> definitely ask the Lord to be with you during it because you will go through the wave of emotions. Um, and where I'll point how I feel about this this podcast in particular is um Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. 
And I think this verse applies big time to the Rise and Fall of Mars Hill podcast. Now, some could argue like, oh, it's corrupting talk because it's it's about particular people and their behaviors. Um, but it's not the intent of just being like, let's lift, list off all Driscoll's flaws. Let's lift off, list off all these things and, and just put it out there. Because, I mean, you could do that in five minutes. It's super easy, unfortunately. It's super easy to do that with this dude. His rap sheet is not good. Um, but this podcast is investigating and going into the people who was there, who were theirs experiences. Um, and that's where I think it is good for building up because there is a lot the church and <laughs> the body of the church, the believers. Um, so we could say the corporate church and, <laughs> and the, the people church. I don't know. Um, I hope you get what I'm saying. <laughs> There's a lot to be learned from this. Um, I mentioned earlier, like how could people not see there were people involved who had been serving faithfully at Mars Hill for years that their only direct experiences with say with Driscoll were were the good ones because as you hear these podcasts you hear and examples and evidences and experience and experiences where he was walking with the Lord and he was living out his faith in a very very positive way but that blinded people uh, that blinded people who were there to the faults um now I'm not throwing that out in an ignorant way but it's to me it's quite simple when you're only experiencing the good side it's almost like you can't believe the bad side you can't fathom it because the only experience you've had was this great one so it it's challenging you you don't know your it's a weird analogy but I'm gonna go with your it's the frog in the boiling pot apparently I have no idea how anybody figured that out um that a frog doesn't notice that it's in a boiling pot because the temperature slowly rises I have no idea but apparently that's the case anyways um like when you're only experiencing the good things and Driscoll was a controversial pastor to begin with he courted controversy because of his direct confrontational at times harsh and definitely at times unbiblical tone um it became easy for them to be for people to push it aside being like okay no this is just this is just people like fixating on stuff who are lacking the context who weren't there blah 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 um so they're they're not seeing it um and then you're finding out heartbreaking things like those who did experience like horrible horrible um treatment from the church uh from that church from mars hill because um Driscoll was really setting it up so he was accountable to no one. Um, he, he was on the board of elders at the same time. I believe he was heading it. And then he slowly would push out anybody who disagreed um, with what he said or who would challenge him and call him out on his crap, which always needed to happen um, with just surrounding himself with yes men. Um, he also, like the image of Mars Hill was becoming less and less about Jesus, less and less about that. And it was more like, we've got this mega rock star pastor. He is what, he is what our success is measured on. And that's never supposed to be what the church is. And that's never supposed to be the role of the pastor. Um, but it allowed, it's, they allowed it, he allowed it, um, he, he was going in headlong. A lot of people had a lot of concerns about him. Like there's earlier in his uh, vocational career and life, um, a lot of people were like, okay, there's some good theology behind him, but he does not have the experience and he should not be going into the position that he's in. But things were allowed to happen because they're, they're, they're weighing the pros against the cons and they're they're not following through, not seeing how bad the cons are going to get. Um, so like I said, there's a lot to learn from this. And you can learn 
so much why people deconstruct their faith or why they walk away after having this horrible experience with a church and with its people. Um, like I'm talking when, when staff at the church were leaving, they'd excommunicate them and that in very unbiblical ways, like, and threaten with threaten like you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement which what um you're not allowed to say anything and if you don't we're we're gonna make sure you don't get your severance and we're gonna make sure you're blackballed um and one guy was leaving the church um because he was just he was aware of where it was at and what it was going to become even further and he's like i'm done and they're like they tried to say no they tried to fight him on it and then eventually um he refused to sign the NDA, and they're like, well, we're refusing to give you your severance, which is wrong and illegal, I'm pretty sure. Um, and thankfully, a church community around him supported him and his family for the next year. Uh, but it was also at the point where it was all about Mars Hill. It's good. It's got to be Mars Hill at the corner, at every corner in Seattle. Uh, it's got to be a Mars Hill. It's got to be a, like a Starbucks. And that's not a church model. If you're, if you're wanting a church at every corner, I understand that. It doesn't have to be yours, and it doesn't have to be all about you, and that's where it was. Needless, and there's so many controversies that I do not have the time to get into, but I do highly recommend it. It is a very tough listen, but I do think that it can be used for building up others because then you can understand where other believers or people who are deconstructing or in the midst of walking away are and what informed them and what informed those experiences and then you can learn how to build them up um you can learn so much from this podcast so just wanted to share those two cents. I, I think it's helpful. I, I don't find it harmful in the slightest. It's fascinating. It's heartbreaking. It's interesting. I personally don't think it's harmful, but check your heart as you, if you start it. Um, and if you're going to it with the right reasons, pray through it. And, uh, I really think there's a lot to learn there. Have a great week and God bless my friends. Also check out faith and fandom. Peace.